In terms of tree spread in Orchard True, there were stati statistical differences. You can see McCown's upright growth reflected in the smaller tree spread in both years. Ginger Gold ranked the highest in tree width in both 2009 and 2010. In general, again, within each cultivar there was, there was an increase in tree width. We still need to calculate and analyze the rate of increase of each cultivar to see if there's differences. Here are the same measurements for Orchard 1. Ginger Gold trees ranked as the tallest trees in 2009 and 2010. Liberty trees were the shortest trees in both years. In general, there is an increase, there was an increase in overall tree height from one year to the next. I do need to note that these, these data are from all the trees in Orchard 1. Some of these trees were in the kelp extract biostimulant study that I mentioned previously. But this slide and others in this presentation regarding Orchard 1 combines the data from all trees regardless of what um, kelp treatment they received. Tree spread in Orchard 1. In general, one can also see an increase in overall tree width from one year to the next in Orchard 1. What we will be looking at is, again, the rate of increase for each cultivar to see if there are any changes um, in increase over time. Ginger Gold trees had the greatest tree width in both years in Orchard 1 and were the largest trees. Moving on to bloom ratings. The bloom rating is based on a 0 to 5 scale, where 0 is equal to no bloom, and five is being a uh, full, uh, full bloom snow, what's often called snowball, snowball bloom. This slide shows the ratings for Orchard 1 for both years. You can see that Honeycrisp is showing its biannual tendencies with a high bloom rating in 2009 and a low rating in 2010. It must be noted that no thinning was conducted in Orchard 1 in both years because of the kelp treatment research that was occurring in this orchard. In general, the bloom rating decreased in 2010 compared to 2009 in Orchard 1. These are the bloom ratings for the five cultivars in Orchard 2 for the both years. This orchard had been thinned in each growing season. Again, the bloom rating is from 0 to 5 with 0 no bloom to 5 full bloom or a snowball bloom. The ratings are a little more uniform uh, between the two years in this in this orchard. Zestar, Ginger Gold, and Liberty rank the highest in rating in both years. Total yield per tree. Okay, these this slide is on um, orchard one. And the total yield per tree includes all fruit produced and, inclu and including fruit on the tree at harvest or on the ground. So it's total production per tree. You can see the effects of cold weather in the early spring in 2010. There was snow during the pink bud stage and two frost events during bloom and petal fall, which had an impact on the yield per tree. Please note that the yields are in kilograms. In terms of conversion, 2 pounds, 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. Honeycrisp had the highest yield in 2009, and that relates to the high bloom rating in that year. In 2010, Honeycrisp had fewer blooms, and correspondingly, it had lower yield. Again, this, is, this orchard um, was not thinned in either year. Here is the total yield per tree in Orchard 2. Again, you can see the lower yields due to the frost in 2010. McAllen had the lowest total yield per tree in both years. In 2010, its yields was not significantly different from Honeycrisp's, however. Ginger Gold ranked the highest in yield per tree in both years. The numbers in this slide are an ex 
Extrapolation of what might be the bushels produced per acre based on the average yield per tree. So it's extrapolation. It's not actual data. It's an estimate. To give a comparison, in Vermont, over the last few years, on average, the reported bushels produced per acre was approximately 332 bushels. This slide illustrates that this orchard will, is still relatively young, and it also illustrates the impact of the frost in 2010. Again, the numbers in this slide are extrapolation of what might be the bushels produced per acre based on average yield per tree. Also, again, you can see the impact of the frosts um, on yield in 2010. Given these estimates of yield per acre for each of the cultivars, Ginger Gold ranked the highest and McAllen lowest in both years. The estimated production per, per acre in the orchard is still below the state average, but hopefully it will be increasing in future years. Here you see the USDA apple grade distribution for Orchard 1 for both years. The percentages are based on an assessment of 10 fruit per tree, which translates to 30 fruit per replication, and we had five replications. In 2009, uh, three hailstorms on June 26, July 7th, and July 16th caused moderate damage to the apple crop, which impacted fruit quality at harvest time. Liberty in 2009 had the lowest percentage of fruit in the U.S. number one count grade and the highest percentage of culled fruit. This is because of the small size of the fruit. Again, Orchard 1 was not thin because of the, the kelp extract study that was being conducted in this orchard, and the size of the fruit was very small. In 2010, there was a there was a very high codling moth population which damaged the fruit. Also, there appeared to be a high percentage of fruit rots, which will be seen in a few slides from now. It is thought that some of the rots were possibly associated with codling moth feeding damage. You can see, in general, there was a higher percentage of fruit culled in 2010, which can be partially attributed to uh, codling moth feeding and the fruit rots. In both years, McAllen ranked the highest in the percentage of fruit in the U.S. number one count grade, followed by either Ginger Gold or Zestar. These are the percentages of fruit in Orchard 2 that were graded into the various USDA categories. Again, you can see in general there was a higher percentage of fruit culled in 2010, which can be partially attributed to codling moth feeding and fruit rots. In particular, Honeycrisp had a high percentage of culled fruit in 2010. Ginger Gold, McAllen, Liberty ranked the highest in terms of highest percentage of fruits graded in the num U.S. number one count category in both years. As I mentioned previously, we collect an extensive amount of data each year, including disease incidence and severity on the five cultivars in each orchard to determine differences among the, among the cultivars. I would like to present briefly some of the disease data we have collected. I do want to point out that we, are, we use available disease models to identify, identify ri high risk periods of disease development and use primarily lime sulfur or sulfur when warranted for fungal diseases, in particular the management of apple scab. However, in each orchard system, we emphasize cultural practices that help to reduce the risk of disease, such as sanitation, proper pruning and tree training, and proper nutrition and ground cover management. In this part of the presentation, Excuse me. I will show the data from Orchard 2 since the results were similar in both orchards. These data are, the, are from the August apple scab assessment of all the foliage on 10 shoots per tree, which translates into 20 shoots per replication, and we had a number of replications. I should point out that 2009 can be characterized as wet and cool, whereas 2010 was wet in June, but then hot and dry. And I think 
That difference is somewhat reflected in the differences in the incidence of foliar scab between the two years. Also, 2009 scab incidence was a reflection in part of the trees outgrowing the sprayer that was being used at the time. The trees in Orchard 2 had grown to a height where the tops were not being reached by the sprayer. Consequently, the tree height was pruned back and a different sprayer was used in 2010. You can see that McCowan ranked the highest in incidence of foliar scab in both years. Ginger Gold was the next highest in both years and not statistically different from McCowan. It is interesting to know that low level, the low level of scab found on Honeycrisp in both 2009 and 2010. Honeycrisp appears to have some natural resistance to apple scab.